My name is Keith M. Little. Uh, I am a Navajo code talker serving in the United States Marine Corps during World War II. Uh, I live here in Crystal, but originally I was born in uh, Arizona. My brand to the uh, almighty people is Kodachini, bitter water. Then uh, many goats, those are uh, 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 my, my, my dad's people, my dad's clan. And then uh, Edge Water Meadow people is uh, my uh, grandpa's. And then uh, my grandparents, uh, my paternal grandparents is at the Kia Ani, and that's a Taurian house clan. So that is my identification to as an Navajo. You know, I was an orphan, being raised by my sisters and relatives. When I came into the world and when I noticed that, that the world around me, I noticed there was uh, a man and a woman, and also uh, my, my two nieces. But uh, the, the girls, they called the man and the woman my mom and dad, my father and my mother. But for me, I was just a stranger. Keith Little attended boarding school at Ganado Mission School. I don't know the word stupid, but dumb, I think I, I heard that too many times. So that's the, that, that, that's the way uh, uh, boarding school was. They copied the uh, military, military discipline. The only thing is that you're punished. At Ganado Mission School, during a cookout, students heard about the Japanese attack on America, Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor? Well, it happened on Sunday. On this certain day. Uh, we, we uh, forgot we forgot to anyway, uh, forgot that for any of us to bring some salt, and salt is what we eat. We season the food, and that tasted that bad. That made the meat taste better. So uh, when we cook the meat, then he says, somebody says salt, salt. Where's the salt? Find out there wasn't any. So the best runner out of the groups, he went went back to the dormitory and uh, stole some, some salt over there, borrowed it or something. Bring, come on back. But when uh, he come back to us and he says, uh, here, here, here's, here's the salt. Do you know that the um, United States has been attacked? We're in a war. We started a war. Sneak attack. And uh, a lot of us, uh, when we heard that word, sneak attack, how, how did they do it anyway? Right away, I, uh, that gun, they, must, they, they, they must really be uh, sneaky people, you know. How could they do that? Maybe the Army and the uh, Armed Forces in Hawaii, or maybe, maybe they're asleep get caught with their pants down. That's the way we felt, and uh, we felt anger. A metal anger creep into our minds. And there was a broadcast going on from Washington, D.C. President Roosevelt was, uh, was, go was going to talk and uh, in it, 
He said, this is a day of infamy. And I heard that distinctly. And I remember it distinctly. Our matron, when, when, when the man said, Roosevelt said, that we may have to go to war. And uh, she, she moaned. Oh, she said, the matron. She was an elderly woman, white. And uh, I, I wonder why, why she gave a moan. So I managed to ask her, I said, Miss Simons, how come you, you give a, a, a moan uh, when, when, the, the, when the president said that we may have to go to war? Then she said, war is terrible. You cannot think of going to war because some of you are going to get hurt, get killed. You're going to be in a war. In uh, summer of 1942, I, some of my buddies, many of my buddies went home. And from there, they enlisted in the Marine Corps. And then I found out that uh, at the post office, there's a, uh, a poster hanging in there. Somewhere where you can see that the United States was, United States Marine Corps was the greatest fighting people in the world. And that is, when I glance at it, that's, that, that's what I want. So I was only uh, 16 years old at the time, in the summer of 1942. So on my 17th birthday, a day after I got, I got leave and went to Gallup and enlisted in the Marine Corps. So the guy I was with, I guess he lied about his age also. I didn't know that. He was talking about, you know, uh, if his elderly, if his guardians will not give permission for him to go, to, to go into the service. So uh, he, he, he said that, uh, well, I know my mom is not going to, uh, some print the paper, the permission. I know that my dad is not going to do it, and my grandpa don't know how to how he can. Uh, per, you say, you take care of the animals right here until you're old enough to go to war. So things like that, you know, he he had doubts, and. Uh, He, uh, we schemed, he schemed. He suggested that, you know, there, there's an old man out here, you know, the, he's, he's got a flock of sheep that he takes care of every day. You heard sheep out to the, to the east of Fort Defiance. And uh, sometimes he goes over there and visits with him. And so why don't we, uh, why don't we ask him? That time, thumbprint was a, uh, Signature, legal signature. So we, so we ask him, and right away he says, yeah, I'll do it. Well, he said, uh, Grandpa, you have uh, just some printed for us to go, a paper that says authorization to go into the Marine Corps. So we're going to go to war. Well, I'm glad I did that, he says. We need young men and of your age over there that, 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 uh, that are strong. I want you to kill just as many Japanese as possible, slant eyes. That's the way he put it. 
So that was a, a, uh, a cheering squad for us. <laughs> After Keith enlisted in the Marine Corps, he was sent to Camp Pendleton for training. A uh, DI asked me, are you American Indian? I said, yes, sir. And then, uh, by any chance, are you a Navajo? I said, yes, sir. Well, it was not to my knowledge that they were using Navajos to make the, for secret communication, and this is what they were involved in. And I guess they, 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 they billed it as a special duty. They took us to, to uh, Camp Pendleton. Communication, Navajo Communication School. Training. And uh, that's where we, uh, we learned that out of our, out of our astonishments that the Navajos were being used, Navajo language is being used as a code you know, there's about 20, 20 of us that, uh, that, that, that started class in 1943, summer of 1943. And that's, that's, how, that's how I got into communication. So we learned it and we qualified and we went overseas and went into um, uh, Roy and Amor and Saipan and Tinian and Iwo Jima. And I guess it's just like a football game, you know, you're on a team and you got your first game and you wonder what's going to happen to you. You wonder how you're going to do. And uh, you just want to, you just want to, you just want to, I guess, uh, survive. Well, one, uh, my, during my first battle in the Marshall Islands, uh, I think, uh, uh, we were called where we we got on um, landed on uh, Namor. Namor is uh, an island connected by uh, causeway to uh, Roy, and uh, Roy is an uh, ammunition dump and got an airfield there. But anyway, uh, it took us two days to secure the island. Uh, there was a little. Uh, Steel reinforced concrete building. It was a wide door, and uh, we didn't pay any attention to it because uh, it, it it didn't have the door was uh, really locked, I guess. But I see the door. We 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 seen the door open. You know, we watch it, and. Uh, Pretty soon there's a white flag coming out on a stick. So there was somebody inside, or a, a group of men, so everybody trained their rifle on, uh, on, uh, on the target. He, he came out uh, through the door and stepped about a few steps away from the door. And uh, he didn't have any weapon, he didn't have any clothes on except for a G-string around his bottom. Uh, about that time, somebody shot, and then everybody started shooting. And meantime, he, uh, the, 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 the man got down and uh, he started running. Right, the, the nearest protection is uh, about 10 feet away, the crater. So he dove in there. And uh, the, the, platoon, the platoon leader was yelling all the, all the time. He says, uh, uh, cease fire, cease fire, God damn it. If you can't shoot him, leave him alone. <laughs> and then the firing stopped and he says, uh, God be God damn. He says, what kind of Marines do I have anyway? <laughs> can't, even sh can't even shoot an enemy 10 feet away. <laughs> For me, anyway, uh, I think about the holy people. All right, you're going to you're going to protect me. I want to go through these difficult times. 
that is uh, probably my, my, my last thought before I start running someplace. And then uh, the, uh, and I make it to the other side and surprise myself by being getting there. And you learn as you go along. When the war ended in 1945, Keith returned home, thankful to be alive. You know, you, a lot, I find that a lot of people, a lot of people that have seen the worst end of it, don't talk about it. Because they think that the people that got that killed, the soldiers that got killed, the Marines that got killed, they made the supreme sacrifice. While I'm thankful that I came back. And there's a lot of guilty feeling on the survivors. Although they, they were in it. So there it is. Uh, um, I guess I'm lucky, I'm fortunate, and you're thankful that you survive beyond being thankful for an ordinary person that never seen a war. Keith Little is president of the Navajo Code Talker Association. One of the organization's main goal is the construction of the Navajo Code Talkers Museum near Windrock, Arizona. And in the, in the museum, it will tell the true story. The real, what do you call it, ethical story of how the, how the, the code, the military code was uh, uh, thought of. And they developed it, and the uh, Navajos, they developed it and utilize it in the war, and that became a non-unbreakable code, the most dependable, reliable, and secure form of communication for battlefield uses. In 2000, the Navajo Code Talkers were recognized for their service when they received congressional medallions from the United States President. When they honored us to get our congressional medal, silver medal, the other guy, the 29, they went to Washington and they got a gold, gold uh, medal. And here, when we, those, that, those of us that are not, not just ordinary Marine code talkers, we got the silver one. And uh, I said, uh, what, 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 what is this for? What do you think about it to my buddy? And uh, one, one guy says, uh, uh, just maybe, just maybe I have finally become American citizen. 